have Raymond Ray on the line from Smart Hustle. He is an entrepreneurial expert. He's a speaker and he's an author. And I'm so pleased that he came on the Culture Soup. How are you doing, Raymond? I am fantastically delighted to be here. Michelle, your body of work precedes you, so I'm excited to connect with you. And really importantly, not about me, to share with your community. Uh, so I'm deliriously excited to be here. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Well, I am thrilled too. And I, you know, I'm humbled by your words. Thank you so much. Why do, what do you think we have a culture soup moment? Wow. That's a very broad question. And I would say, let's do it. Let's do it. Why not? Okay. So. <laughs> I have been looking at the threads like I always do, but there yep. is a trend that I'm seeing, especially on Instagram, maybe a little bit on LinkedIn, not so much because we mm. have our corporate types that are there and our colleagues. Gotta be but serious. Yes, very, very serious and very, very buttoned up, all of that. But I see where entrepreneurship is being glorified, almost mm. over glorified, would you think? Romanticized, yes. I think, is probably yes. the best word. I'll give you an example. I'm mm -hmm. thumbing through and I see this wonderful, you know, entrepreneur who's a woman who's doing well for herself. But every time you see her, she is dressed to the nines. Her hair is done. She's got her makeup done. And she's <laughs> traveling here and she's over on this jet and she's doing that and this and that. And then she makes a statement. Well, you know what? Entrepreneurship isn't so glamorous. And I kind of laughed to myself because... If it wasn't, how would we know? <laughs> exactly. Have you seen this? Exactly. No, listen, I think you're right. I think there's, I guess, two or three things I would say to that, Michelle. Thank you so much for bringing the culture soup to us, for sure. Yes. But I think that, A, uh, I think you said one thing. She seems to be well put together. And I must say, for me as well, I've had issues with depression, uh, wanting to uh, suicide, issues with finances. So taking my own self, mm -hmm. this small screen we have. Yeah. It shows you only what we allow, what I allow you to see. Right. So I think that's one. It seems. And mm -hmm. those watching that should sit back and know this is a moment in time. Totally. I think point two, yeah, watching those of us who just show, look at me, I'm here, Ramon flying an airplane. I've had people <laughs> in my church who've never been in a plane before. Yeah. So to them, being in a plane means you must be a player. It's huge, right. So yeah. So to mm -hmm. your point, Michelle, I think that, yeah, listen, yeah, we're going to show, we're going to brag a little bit. I think it's good. But I would tell those of us who've been blessed, yeah, maybe we can show a little more, out, a little more reality. Yeah. Show, show a little more. I woke up today and, and I just wasn't feeling it. Look, look, <laughs> you know? I'm on the line this morning in my 30 minute mentor session, sometimes yeah. a therapy for me too. But I go one on one and consult with entrepreneurs, you know, business managers, doesn't matter. Right. And this was a startup entrepreneur. And one of the things I was telling her to help her cope because she had some unreasonable goals for herself. Mm -hmm. You know, she just started and she said, I'm just not where I think I should be. And I said, where do you think you should be? And she said, well, I should be able to support everything that I'm doing right now. I said, okay, when did you start? She's like three months ago. I said, okay, Hello. here's what we need to think about. It yes. takes time, number one. Yes. And it's a journey and it's hard, okay? Yes. One thing I asked her to do was purge her Instagram and her social media feeds. Wow. And that's because we're seeing so much of this, yeah, girl, boss, yes. boss, babe, you know, be your own boss, I'm boss and I'm bothered, you know, all of this good stuff. And we're not seeing the yes. pain, if there's yeah. any. If they're really yes. real and we're not seeing anything that feeds our souls as entrepreneurs because we're a special breed, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. And you know, can I ask you a question now, Michelle? Yes, by all means. Okay. And by the way, Seth Godin, I had, I had a similar issue. So I went to Seth Godin and he was on the phone with me and he, it's interesting. He tells everybody this. He's blogged and said, I'm Ramon, what game are you playing? Yeah. A baseball player complaining that they can't throw a football. You get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But I guess my question to you is that how vulnerable should we be? I know sometimes mm. people are giving me flack for that. You know, I've been in events and they're like, they didn't say this word, but I'm just going to put yeah. that way to make it general. They said, oh, Ramon, you're a billionaire. Obviously, I'm not Michelle. And I was <laughs> like, no. And the lady grabbed me. She said, just embrace it. I'm like, mm, I don't know if I can embrace yeah. that. So the question is, is there a time where we should be a bit vulnerable, you know, and not... You know, I think there is a time and a place, and I speak about authenticity all the time. It's so mm -hmm. important that you are authentic. And it doesn't mean that you have to go on Instagram Live and boohoo, you know, when the deal right. goes bad, you know? Right. But right. it does mean that you temper the highlights real, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and I, I pick and choose my, my times to be vulnerable. I find that speaking 
when I'm mm. like speaking in front of people is my yes. number one time to go there. Right. So Absolutely. like when um, I visited with some university students, I talked to them about layoffs, you know, mm -hmm. I talked to them about, oh, gee whiz, you know, figuring out how much money you actually had in the bank so you could have some multiple income streams to support you. You know, that's when I'm really vulnerable. And that's when I find that people really gravitate and say, oh, my gosh, yes, I want to follow her online. Yes. And I really believe that the best bands brands are built offline Absolutely. and that social media really should just amplify what's going on in real life. What do you think? I love how you said that. And I think also being vulnerable, Michelle, makes you so relatable. Mm -hmm. I found the same thing that when I'm able to say, I identify with you. Here's where I am today. But stop. Let me tell you the journey of where I've yeah. been. Yeah. Then it gives people hope. And, and you still have a lot of humility or a little totally. bit depending on who we are. My wife will say, Ramon, you need to be more humble. Yeah. But the point is show people the journey. And I think you're right. Going to brands, I think it's it's so important. I think the brands that can telegraph, uh, it's hard to have a brand. I don't know if it can be humble or not, but to telegraph it to the people. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's powerful. the thing. It's very important to have people and ambassadors that can speak and be real. Yes. Um, I had a conversation with Ted Rubin not long ago about mm -hmm. this very topic in employee advocacy and mm -hmm. not always going to the tippy tippy top of your organization and expect, you know, the chairman to be yes. that vulnerable all the time. You need people in the ranks, yes, you know, that absolutely. people can relate to. So this is so important. And being able to say uh, one uh, thing is, as you know, your uh, corporate leadership and all that is that is um, I we don't know that's or I don't know. I think it's a powerful mm -hmm. word. I remember I was at a company and the executive, my boss, and she was like, Ramon, I don't know. Yeah. But I know you'll figure it out. Right. That empowered me. I'm like, <laughs> she don't know. Yeah. And, and I was like, I, I got the solution, of course. But it right. just her being able to say, I don't know. But Ramon, I trust you. I felt like a million dollars. Right. No. I feel like $3 million. Totally. So, so now people kind of have a feel for you, Ramon. I want you to tell us who you are and what you do. Because, you know, yes. I introduce a lot of folks onto the show as entrepreneur, speaker, author, you know. So what makes you different? What all do you do? You have Smart Hustle. Matt. Absolutely. Well, the big thing that makes me different, those of you who are listening here, very clear. None of the speakers that, and authors that Michelle has had shave their hair every Friday in their bathroom. <laughs> and none of them like to have burnt pancakes and bacon. I guarantee burnt that. Burnt pancakes? Yes, right. they're delicious. Okay, we we'll visit syrup. that on an, on the coaching corner. How's that? <laughs> but, wait, this be different. Though. A little bit about me. Listen, I've uh, I used to work at the United Nations until I got fired. I was there for over ten years, mm -hmm. and I got I left that job, or they let me go because of my entrepreneurial ventures. Yes, um, I've been speaking for over twenty years, really traveling around the world, traveling around the USA. And in the nutshell of my story, Michelle, I started four companies. Mm -hmm. uh, all have been in the media space. One was an event business, uh, and I sold two of them. So I think for me, that's one. Nice mark of distinction, not like a Mark Zuckerberg billion dollar yeah, exit. Sure. But I'm happy that I built some small companies and sold it for a multiple. And it's okay to be a small company. I think sometimes yes. people believe that, oh, I must grow it. I must fund it. It must become this big multi. Nope. You know what? Do enough to feed your family and be comfortable and have yeah. a little fun. I love you said that. And, that. and that's my whole hustle, hence the smart hustle. Mm -hmm. So started a few companies, author, of course, as you know, Michelle, several books, latest one, a celebrity CEO, uh, speaker, uh, and influencer marketing is a big thing I do. And for those who don't know, this is where, listen, brands need a human face. Right. Take a company like, I don't know, take a- That's how I met this, you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> take this quarter by a company, whatever, quarter company, let's call it. Okay. This quarter company can't, it's nothing. They need a Michelle Ramon, somebody to do a Twitter chat, do mm -hmm. Facebook Live, go out and about and represent and bring them to life. Mm -hmm. So in essence, or this chapstick, my favorite, Birch Bees. So well, and you <laughs> expand is, the reach of a company that may not be able to go niche, as you correct. mentioned before. So you, by nature of being you and what you do, you attract followers yes. and community that relies on you and actually trust your word. That's and correct. a big brand correct. doesn't really have that. Yep. And that's what it's all about, Michelle. You said that one thing you said, uh, reliability and trust. That's exactly one part of what I do in a huge way is help brands have credibility, authenticity uh, in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit about me. I live in the uh, Northeast area and uh, love what I do, especially awesome. helping small businesses grow. Do you find that there are some brands that don't quite understand influencer marketing in a way that they engage with you in the correct manner? In other words... You have to know Ramon and know your community and know what you speak about in order to engage you correctly. 
Absolutely. I think, listen, I think there's, I would say, two different types of companies. Some are more of a transactional relationship. And I'll take that. that you know, I'm paid to do it, so I'll take that. Mm-hmm. But that's Ramon, we want you to do these three things, these four things, these one thing. I get it. Mm-hmm. I think the other companies are Ramon. We get you, and we want what you bring to the table. One, for example, is uh, SAP. Right. I got a call from them going back to my pancakes, and their email, this big German serious company, started out, Michelle, I kid you not, Ramon, we know you like burnt pancakes and bacon. <laughs> Can you please come and host our big conference? Look, you know what? It's creative. They knew enough about you. That probably pushed one of your passion point buttons, and you All probably the- didn't even blink all day long so that's so you're exactly right and i think that's one thing i think that listen the people you're working with i think we talked about michelle out of our call offline is being authentic Mm -hmm. this is part of it you know i can't i can't sometimes i want to be somebody else or somebody else wants to be me but i tell people i can't be you you can't be me we can learn for each other right for sure learn from each other but we got to be comfortable in our own skin totally Uh, one is your path to now is different yes and that's the dna of who you are all so, day long. But you have to know who you are. <laughs> yeah. I tell people that's that's rule number one, authenticity. Know thyself, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So let's talk about the celebrity CEO. Your sure. latest book. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I think the biggest thing that excites me, one of the biggest things, a lot of things excite me, Michelle, but one <laughs> of the biggest things that excite me, I think, is the aspect, and we touched on it earlier, most businesses are not going to be very, very big. They're not. Most are going to be smaller businesses. So what do we do to generate enough revenue to to sustain ourselves and our families and give money away and live well? Mm -hmm. It's finding the narrowest market that you can, not saying I'm targeting female entrepreneurs. Way too big. Mm -hmm. What kind? Dominican? Those who are tall, short, rich? I don't know. But finding the smallest viable market you can and being a player in that market. Mm -hmm. Seth Godin talks quite a bit about that. And the result about that, Michelle, will be if you're talking to a very small market, all the people in this market know each other. All of them know each other. Not over here, over here, but they talk. So if you're a big player in a small market, you're going to be the celebrity CEO. And from that, that's where you'll learn better language because you'll be talking to all the people who you serve. Right. And you'll become a big dog. You're building your... And the second thing about this is I say... It's easier to ask for a smile than ask for a sale. Mm -hmm. So build your fan base, build your community, rinse and repeat. But that's the essence of what I created this book for because it was my journey. Mm -hmm. That's golden. So let's talk about your journey. What brings you all the way to here? (laughs) (laughs) How did you get to start? It's been an interesting journey. Well, you said, you you know what? You had a very vulnerable moment right there. You were very authentic and said you were working for the United Nations and boop. That's right. Bye bye. Right Right on the floor, right? If I turn my camera right over here, there's a little folder where I have my termination letter. Wow. You know what? Keep it for posterity, right? Yes. Yes. But you you brought up a really good point. There are some companies that just don't like you doing things on the side. Correct. And I don't fault them for it. I miss in that case, full disclosure, the UN had rules and all that, a long story. It's a it's like a government agency. So I think governments and Agencies like that have a rule. But listen, I think my as far as the speaking career, Michelle, I remember a friend of mine who used to speak for SCORE, Service mm-hmm. Corps. They're no longer called Service Corps Retired Executives, but SCORE, the free government service. Mm-hmm. Uh, she said, Ramon, I can't speak. And she knew what I did. She said, can you come and speak? Mm-hmm. So there, I think, is one of my first uh, times of speaking with them. And I remember my son was four years old. He's over 20 now. He was playing with little cars on the floor. Yeah. So that was kind of the journey of me speaking, Michelle. Mm-hmm. A writing I remember Black Enterprise and Inc. Magazine, kind of around the similar time frame, said, can I write for them? Because they saw some work I was doing online. Mm-hmm. Just a little blog that I was doing, you know, mm-hmm. faithfully as we talked offline consistently. And that really has been my journey, Michelle. This opportunity to speak at SCORE, people see you and hear what you do. Mm-hmm. And then what do people ask you? The, the second thing, what's your fee? My fee? Yeah. My Let fee me think about fee? that. <laughs> Let me get back right. to you. <laughs> And it grows from there. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, So it sounds like you had a little content model going too. I know that I found that when I was speaking a lot, um, I think the peak of it was probably 2017 where it was pedaled to the floor. Yes. And Black Enterprise approached me too and said, hey, can you contribute? I was like, where am I going to find the time? How am I going to do this? And it occurred to me, how about I write about everything I speak on? Mm. And so that's how I kind of built that content strategy inadvertently because it really was about efficiencies. Yes. But I would 
post on my social handles that I was going to speak somewhere. People would come. I'd speak. And then afterwards, I'd write it up for Black Enterprise or LinkedIn and then amplify it with social. And that little machine. Yes. I mean, it mushroomed. Absolutely. It's been amazing. And I must say thank you to you, Michelle, that I think it was the content. But knowing what you do. It's, you drop in science and you can feel your passion in it too. So definitely content, but I think well, thank you. the show had a little sparkle in there. I appreciate too. that. I appreciate and that. And I must say, <laughs> going back to the content, one of my first companies was a computer consulting company. Okay. And this, again, was 20 plus years ago, Michelle. So I would put uh, tips to my clients, only about 50, 20 to 50, mm -hmm. uh, 30 or so. I'd put into a paper newsletter. Wow. Let them mail it. So even before That's the, LinkedIn, et cetera, was popular. And before uh, email marketing. <laughs> wow. Exactly. You know, there's power in that, though. You've got your list. And I share with people all the time that it's even more powerful than social media because it's direct and they expect yes. it from you and they're loyal. They have opted in. And unless they opted out, they're looking for it. That's right. Build your list. Mm -hmm. Build your list. Absolutely. And so that's a that's a little bit of my path. You know, of, of I think I think that paper newsletter, not even email, I think that probably was the journey to me just being a, a content person. And yeah. to those listening, I'm not a great writer. Mm -hmm. I have typos. You can get help for all that. Yeah. But the passion and the knowledge only you can bring out. So how do you do that? How do you do that? I mean, by now you can get help. But when you're starting sure. out and if you're not a writer, here comes Inc. Here comes Black Enterprise. And you've got this blog. Like sure. what possessed you to do a blog if you can't write? Sure. And I, I think it's great. Correct. And, and, and to be clear, of course, I can write a little bit, but when, meaning I'm not some Pulitzer writer. You know, right. if you can't do any writing, you should do something else. But mm -hmm. I, I think really, A, I had the knowledge of it. So I'm one of my first companies was computer consulting. So my pedigree in the past had been kind of the tech evangelist guy. So I had that knowledge. What are you deeply knowledgeable about? That's mm -hmm. one. And kind of as you said, Michelle, point two then, can you telegraph that into a story that other people want to read right. or watch? Right. That's the essence I find of content for any small business listening to us is that we all have an expertise in something. Mm -hmm. Can you sit down then and put that to paper with some clear thoughts? One tip, as you probably know, Michelle, lists are great. Yes. Ten ways to paint to do your carpet. Ten ways to upholster your living room. Yes. Uh, three ways to love your dog better. Right. I'm making it up so it's not just techie. It can be right. about anything. We all want the quick tip. And if you can do that on a regular basis, I would say you're on your journey. Maybe you're not going to be a paid writer. Maybe you won't be a paid speaker like me and Michelle, but you're on your way to something maybe greater than what you're doing today just by teaching someone else how to do it with content. Totally. And, you know, I was listening to Gary Vanderchuk, like who doesn't listen to Gary V? <laughs> and um, he this this video was like a year old and it was mm -hmm. my first time ever seeing it. And there's this little boy that stood up at some conference and had a question for him. And he says, you know what? I'm really failing at what I'm doing on mm -hmm. YouTube. And Gary was like, well, what are you doing? He said, well, I share my passions on YouTube, but I only have like, I'm going to say 32 followers. I don't remember how many he said subscribers. Right, right. He said, well, what's your goal? He said, well, I want to have 300 subscribers by the end of the year he okay. said okay well first of all he's like we're gonna handle that and he kind of motioned to the room he said but i want to talk to you about what it is you're doing what's mm. the most important thing that you do and what gets you excited about what you're doing he said i just want to help people i want to inspire them he said you stay doing that and the rest of it will happen and, you know, I think that entrepreneurs, and I'm going to tell the end of that story in a second, you probably know what it is, but entrepreneurs need to hear that. Yes. And it's hard because, you know, you have the whole idea of, oh, gee, I need to feed my family. You know, that's working. Yes, that's reality. Yeah, it's a very real thing. But at the end of the day, if you just keep doing the thing that you're passionate about that helps people, it will come back around. The followers, yes. the money, the, whatever it is. You just can't make the metrics and the dollars the goal, which sounds totally anti what and scary. Total, yeah, totally. Un it's not intuitive at all. Right, right. So, no, for so, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, no, it sounds scary as well. And again, I think you, you said it, you slipped it in there, but I do want to underline that. We're not saying you, you shouldn't eat and make money. Right, Michelle should. and I know totally. you got to make sales and pay the rent. <laughs> yes. You know, your, your, your the landlord's not going to say, oh, great, tweet me, and that's good. For, no. <laughs> So we know that. Yeah. But once you get that figured out, you know, you got to eat, you take borrow right. or live at your lower your cost, all that good stuff. But the long term vision, 
keep doing what you're doing. Consistency. Mm -hmm. Keep adding value. Keep educating people. Yes. And people are going to turn to you. And of course, listen, if you don't know finances, learn a bit of business finance. You yes. don't know how to hire right. Learn that. Because I find also, Michelle, and this is kind of what you help people do. Some people just don't know, are not business savvy. Right. So they know how to make great cupcakes. Exactly. They know how to make, they can do great design, whatever. But, but how they don't do you monetize business. cupcakes? How do you operationalize cupcakes? You're absolutely right. Um, in this 30-minute mentor session that I had this morning, I was sharing with this person who's in startup mode, what do you do in the meantime when you're trying to pay the bills? Well, you do whatever you can, right? If yes. that means that you need to take on a part-time job, do it. You know, Bye, if yeah, if you need to get some funding, do it. You know, whatever it is to make that in the meantime a lot more safe for yes. you and your family, do it. And, and you know, I think sometimes because they see the reels, the highlight reels on social they're not seeing, <laughs> right, the uncle who has yes. the money, who pitched in to help, you know, or, yes. oh, gee, yeah, I was moonlighting at JCPenney or whatever it might have been to help fund your business. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, no, you're so true. What I like is that, listen, go back to Sarah Blakely's story, right? I think it's Blakely. She talks about, you know, she's who she is today. But this girl is a hustler. Yeah. I mean, cutting off the, the ends of her pantyhose, going here, going here, <laughs> going door to door. So you're right. And I think, man, the biggest thing I can, I'm learning from our own discussion today is that we all, many of us are only seeing the journey, yes. the end of the story. But you haven't explored the underbelly, the yeah. tears as I've done. I feel like tearing up now, the tears, the crying, yeah. sitting in your basement wondering, what do I do? Oh, man, I got a $10,000 contract, but the vendor's not paying me in 90 yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. And American so, Express is asking you for money in 30. Hello. Right. <laughs> That's a serious issue. So I think really we're encouraging you. You got to do what you got to do. Make that money, make that rent, make that mortgage payment, whatever it is. But while you're doing that, keep consistent and be smart about business. Yeah. That's really the thing. Hence I say smart hustle. Yeah. So many people hustle, Michelle, that's easy, easier, mm -hmm. but adding the smart to it. Damon John talks about financial literacy. Mm -hmm. All these things are so important to building a, a, a stable business. And remember, it doesn't have to go big. Yes. Mike McCallowitz says it has to be profitable. Profitable. That's the word. Exactly. <laughs> that's the word. You know, um, I think there's a degree of humility in entrepreneurship that is not talked about. Mm. Especially in this age of social media where we're showing the flash and the, yes. you know, and the dash, I would call yes. it. But you have to be humble. There's some things you come face to face with yourself on. I was talking to Miko Branch. She is one of the co-founders of Miss Jessie's Hair Care. Mm. And um, I heard her first speak at Black Enterprise Entrepreneur Summit, which is now forward, by the way, mm, exactly. FWB. Um, and I had her on the show. And it was so refreshing to mm. hear her say, you come face to face with the sides of you that you don't even know you have. And there are times when you, you know, you, there are things you don't know how to do <laughs> and you find out that you don't, you think you're so buttoned up. And then in my instance, I had every, I had my CPA, I had everything like tight when I was running my business, payroll every two weeks, you know, all of this good stuff, people get paid. And right. one day I got this little letter in the mail. I didn't know what it was. And it was a, some kind of state tax. I was like, it can't be like, I'm paying my taxes. Right, I'm a CPA. And then, and then they put a freeze on my account right before payroll. Wow. Yeah. And so yes, I'm calling my good. attorneys. I'm calling my CPA. Like, what the world is going on? I was buttoned wow. up. Like, what is going on? I got to pay my people. And of course, yes. this is unbeknownst to all my employees. <laughs> Yes, of course. And we, and we got it done. Like the whole thing got done, but that I almost yes. said the S word. It's scary. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. No, absolutely. And I'm glad you shared that because that's the kind of thing that people understand. We know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is that then what happens when that happens? Yeah. Meaning, do you have a backup? Or even if you don't have a backup, what what's the resolution? Because problems will come in entrepreneurship. Yes. Problems will come. What do you do about it? Which leads me, if I can, to diverge a slight bit. Sure. Is that another thing was on my mind, Michelle, is that to warn people, maybe they shouldn't be in business. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I don't Look, want to do much water. It's not for everybody. Yeah. It's not for everybody. So that's and the other cost. there are that. those that have done it and they've tried and failed and tried and failed. And now they're off to the races. And some people want to skip to off to the races 
not knowing the try to fail, try to fail, try to fail. And it's kind of got to be in your DNA. Yes. 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 You know what? And that's a, that's a, that's a debate. I, that's a, now you've opened politics. <laughs> I, 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 I did. <laughs> can you learn on entrepreneurship or is it in your you DNA? You can learn me, it. I do think it's, I think it's a gene, meaning gene, DNA, whatever it is. I think it's something those who like pain. Yes. Uh, are used to overcoming and a like to learn. Birth. I think those three things. You got to run to a risk. Yes, yes. And, and I think if you want safety, as we said before, get a great job. And again, going back to Seth Godin, be an entrepreneur in a company yes. and grow there. You can be experimental. Totally. But at least, you know, every other Friday, you're going to get a check. Right. Or you might have in a nine to five, understand the compliance rules, which was me at at and <laughs> understood the compliance, understood wh- where my starts and stops could be with who I could do business with and do a little something on the side, you know, and then you don't feel all the pressure right. to make all the money at once to try and feed the family. And it's an outlet. I know for me, Michelle, the reason why I think, I think Michelle, I probably need to talk to you for six hours to figure out myself, <laughs> but I think the reason I went to entrepreneurship, going back to the DNA, I was just, and again, the UN's a great place. I love the UN, great work. But it's just, I had an itch. Yeah. And my entrepreneurship, I wanted to go out. I wanted to do clients. I wanted to do my own thing. So I think some people have that in them. And your regular job, if it doesn't provide you, go out and start your side flower company, side catering business, whatever it is. I believe it. You know, when I ran my agency, and I've told the story on the show before, I fell into it. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And at the time I told my SVP, I was at a global firm. It was catch him. Mm-hmm. I would freelance just see yeah. how that went. Well, the recession was going like this. It was 2002, 2003. Mm. And so her clientele started asking for more thinking with less money, which you can't do at a big firm. So when I branched out to do media training, you know, just kind of on the side till I figure out what I'm going to do. She would call and say, you know what, this client, mm, they want this much for this much money. I got to keep the lights on here. You know, our overhead is high. Why don't I keep it on in the family? So then I started doing full-fledged PR. Then I started needing to get people. So I kind of fell into it. Yes. But when I look back on my story, which is very, very interesting, I had entrepreneurial ventures when I was just out of college, just out of grad school that I didn't monetize. I was just doing it for fun. And now I look back and I'm like, what if I had monetized that? <laughs> you know, now that I yeah, know what I know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, what shows you? Yeah. The the the, 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 the the what shows you the power of being a very small business. Yes. Sometimes Michelle, the things that a bigger company doesn't want or can't take because yes. they are too big, we small businesses can take advantage right. of. Totally. And I like your story. Totally. So they needed big thinking. I still had big agency thinking. I was just a little person, you know, that didn't need all the overhead. Mm-hmm. But now, since I've had that experience. I need to build or fix things, period. So if I'm not doing that, I am bored. Yes, yes, exactly. And going back to maybe entrepreneurship, DNA, Mm -hmm. we we always, how can we fix how? Yes. Wow, there's water dripping in that pipe. I could create a pipe anti-water dripping company. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. And you know what? These big companies are interested in minds like ours. So so whether you end up going inside, I call myself a hired gun. You know, I I have come to the conclusion I can be inside somewhere for no more than five years. I need to build it. I need to get it it running and I need to go on to the next thing, you know, Um, or I I need to consult for you. I need to do that from the outside. Um, But that's just how I'm wired. And it's and, good you know yourself, which is yeah. good. And I think these bigger companies, why do they want it? For those who may be wondering, they're not so risk averse. Yes. They'd rather Michelle bust her behind, use her capital, make her risk, and grow the Michelle Water Bottle Company. Yeah. Then Patagonia will buy it for you for yes. a tiny sum. And then set Michelle free, please. Because <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. she needs to go do this for someone else. That you know, And that has a lot to do with knowing your value and knowing yourself. Yes. And, you know, that's how you can be the authentic you that you know that you can be, because I know that I have these limits. And yes. I know what I, I need to go build and fix things, period, period. <laughs> that's why we're here, Ramon, on this podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been, it, it's been an amazing time to be here as well. Awesome. So. You have anything to add? Listen, just telling people, one, Michelle, thank you. Follow Michelle on Instagram. I do and see her smiling face and her oh. tidbits. That's one. Two, 
just go do it. Don't don't be afraid. Be smart, but go do it. And going back to the celebrity CEO was that, remember, you don't have to be big. You don't have to be a billion dollar or even hundreds of million dollar company. You can make a great company with a few hundred thousand dollars and be just fine. Grow it. Be profitable. Yes. And be smart. I so love that. Really you know what? Doing. I'm going to get some of my 30 minute mentees to read that. I think that's going to be awesome. Now, where can we find the book? Uh, CelebrityCEO.com. Uh, you can put the title on Amazon, CelebrityCEO.com, and I will send Michelle you. Oh, how about you. two or three copies that you can give to others? Oh, that would be awesome. Let's give away some books, y'all. Okay, Absolutely. awesome. Let's do that. Now, where can we follow you online? Uh, well, you, RamonRay.com is kind of links to my Instagram, Ramon Ray Smart Hustle, Twitter, Ramon Ray, LinkedIn, Ramon Ray, Facebook, <laughs> Ramon Ray. Consistency <laughs> is key. Thank you so much, Ramon. I really appreciate it. And maybe we need to get you back on the coaching corner one day to talk about some, you know, tips and advice for entrepreneurs. This was really good. I would love to. It's been an honor to be with you. And thank you for having me on The Culture Soup. Thank you. Yay. The Culture Soup Podcast is a production of No Silos Communications.